In this video, we're going to talk about a system of linear equations in two variables. We want to go back and review what they are, what their solutions look like, and different methods that we can use to solve these types of systems. This is my definition of the system of equations. It's basically a set of equations with common variables. All right, I have this example here, 2x minus y equals 5 and x plus 2y equals 5. This is a system of equations, it's just two equations with the same variables. What we're going to be interested in is finding the solution to these things. And a solution of a system of equations in two variables uh, include x and y coordinates, your ordered pairs, that satisfy each equation in the system. All right, It has to be an x and a y coordinate that can, you know, both equations will be satisfied if I were to substitute those x and y coordinates into that equation. Let's look at an example of verifying a solution. All right, it says verify that 2, negative 3 is a solution to the system x minus y equals 5, 2x plus y equals 1, right? Remember, it has to satisfy each equation in that system, right? And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to plug in uh, 2 for x, right? That's going to be my x coordinate, and negative 3 for y. And if I get a true statement after I substitute, I'm going to say in both of those equations, I'm going to say that it is a solution. And so if I come here for my equation x minus y equals 5, I'm going to get 2 minus a negative 3 equals 5. I want to see if that is a true statement. Of course, we know that 2 minus negative 3 is the same thing as 2 plus 3, and that definitely equals 5. So I'm halfway there to verify that this is a solution. Now I'm going to go to my second equation and plug in 2 for x, negative 3 for y, and I'm going to get a 4 minus 3, which we know to be a positive 1. And so since this is true for both of these equations, notice both of those equations, we can say that, yes, this is a solution uh, to the system of equations. Okay. And so this gives us a way to always uh, check our solutions when we're going through these examples. Once we start looking at systems of equations, there's different uh, terms that we can use to classify systems, all right? We're going to classify the systems themselves using the words consistent and inconsistent. Consistent means that it has at least one solution. And inconsistent is an example of a system of equations that has no solution, all right? So there are as at least one ordered pair that works for a consistent uh, system and there is no ordered pair that works for an inconsistent system. All right, that's how we classify systems of equations. Now, when we start looking at the specific equations in the system, we can uh, classify them using the words independent and dependent. An independent system is a system that has a solution and actually it has only one solution. All right. And so the other case for dependent systems or equations in a system is an equation that has infinitely many solutions. Notice here that when we have an inconsistent system, since it has no solution, we're not going to use the word independent or dependent. We only use those words for equations in systems that are actually um, consistent. All right. Not for inconsistent systems. All right. To help us see what is going on when we're trying to find a solution uh, to a system of equations, I'm going to look at one of the methods that we can use to help us solve a system, which is graphing. Okay. To solve a system of equations by graphing, you basically graph those linear equations, which are you know lines, on the same uh, coordinate plane, and then your solution will fall into one of these following cases. All right. The first case is when we have intersecting lines. All right, and when we have intersecting lines, notice our uh, solution is always an ordered pair that satisfies those both, both of the equations in our system. And since if I have intersecting lines, they intersect at one point, that single point there is our solution. So anytime I have a graph and I have one point of intersection, I know that I have one solution. And I also know that since I have a solution, my system is consistent and uh, my equations in my system, since I have one solution, my equations are independent. Okay. Case two is when we have parallel lines. Remember, parallel lines do not intersect. 
And when I have parallel lines, that means, and they don't intersect, that means there's no common points for both of those equations in that system. And so that means we have no solution. And when we have no solution, we call our system inconsistent. And remember, in an inconsistent system, we don't classify the equations in that system. Our last case is when our lines overlap. All right. So we have overlapping lines. So let's say I go through and initially, sometimes our equations may look different. But when we start the graph, we're going to see that our graphs actually lay on top of each other. If that is the case, we have infinitely, I'm going to abbreviate that with INF, many, and I'm going to abbreviate solutions with SOL, solutions, which means that our system is consistent because it has a solution, and our equations in that system are dependent. Let's look at an example where we look at, <clears throat> actually, before we go to that example, I want to explain why there's infinitely many solutions, right? So normally our solutions are coming from where our lines intersect. Well, if we have overlapping lines, then every single point on the line is a point of intersection. That's why we have infinitely many solutions in this case, all right? So this is kind of an odd case, but every single point on those lines overlap, they touch, they intersect, and so we have infinitely many solutions. It's consistent system, dependent equations. Let's look at some examples of at least one of these cases here. This example here, x minus y equals 5 and 2x plus y equals 1, right? I want to solve this system of equations by graphing. So this is the graphical method, the graphical method. One of the methods that we're going to learn, right? Well, we already know how to graph lines, right? One of the quickest ways to graph lines is to find your slope and your y-intercept. That means I'm going to solve uh, the, the, each of these equations for y and uh, get it into y equals mx plus b form. If you go through that process, for this first equation, you're going to get that y equals x minus 5. And for the second equation, you're going to get that uh, y equals negative 2x plus 1. Okay? Now, when we have stuff written in y equals mx plus b form, right? the number or the coefficient on your x is your slope. You can write it as a fraction if it's a whole number by putting it uh, under over 1. And my y-intercept is the number that I'm adding or subtracting from x. And we get that our slopes and our y-intercepts are the following. And so once I have those graphs, I'm ready to go to my graph and plot my y-intercept. So I'm going to start with the line y equals x minus 5. So I'm going to use this here. Uh, go to my y-intercept, y which is five, negative 5. And my slope is 1. So that means I can go up 1 and to the right 1 to get to another point. And what I'm going to do, since I don't have a ruler and since I need to find my specific point of intersection, I, I need my line to be as straight as possible because if my line isn't straight, then I'm going to miss the point, right? And so in order for me to do that when I don't have a ruler is I'm going to continue to use my slope. I'm going to go up 1 and to the right 1 once again. I'm going to go up 1 and to the right 1 up one to the right one, up one to the right one. And that way, if I have a whole number, our integer solution, my ordered pair involves integers, then I'll be able to figure out what my solution is by looking at my point of intersection, which I pointed here, all right, from these points that I pointed. I'm going to go to my other line, right? It has a y-intercept of 1. So I'm going to go to 1, and my slope is negative 2. That means I can go down 1 and to the right one from that point. That's not my point of intersection. Let's go down one into the right one again. And as you can see, I have my point of intersection here. And this point of intersect intersection is actually my solution, right? That's the point 2, negative 3, which is my solution. And so if I were going to identify this system here, it would be considered a consistent system because it has one solution, or at least one solution. And since it has one solution, I know that my equations are dependent. They do not depend on each other. All right, that's the graphical method. This approach is good for you, uh, the examples where we have an integer solution for both of our ordered pairs. But when I start having fractional or decimal uh, solutions, this graphical method is going to be a little bit more harder uh, for me to use, or not as reliable. So let's go to all right, my next method is solving a system of equations by using the substitution method. All right, with the substitution method, we're going to substitute one of the equations into one of the uh, expressions for a variable from one equation into the other equation. The way we do that is to first solve one equation for one of the variables. All right, 
take whatever that variable equals and substitute it in for that variable into the other equation. And then I'll have an equation with one variable. So then we can use our methods for solving just regular old linear equations to solve for the variable. And then we can back substitute to find the other variable. Let's put these steps into action. I have x minus 3y equals 1, and I have negative 2x plus 6y equals 3. And I want to solve this by substitution. I'm going to abbreviate that with S-U-B-S. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one equation, and I'm going to pick one variable out of that equation to solve. All right. For instance, let's say I took this first equation, and I solve for x. All right. And we all know how to solve for x, so I'm not going to write these steps down here. But if I solve for x, I'm going to get x equals 3y plus 1, okay, 3y plus 1. And so if I'm going to use my substitution method, then I'm going to take this 3y plus 1 right here and substitute it in for x into the other equation, which I hadn't touched yet. And so that equation is going to become negative 2 times 3y plus 1, and I still have plus 6y equals 3. And now this is a linear equation in one variable, which is y. And so I can go through and I can uh, solve this equation like I would normally solve a linear equation. First thing for me to do is to distribute, right? I'll distribute that negative 2. I'll get a negative 6y minus 2 plus 6y equals 3. Notice here I have like terms, the 6y, negative 6y, and that positive 6y. They cancel. They're 0. So I get 0 minus 2, which is the same thing as negative 2, equals 3. Now, we know from linear equations that negative, well, from math, any arithmetic, negative 2 does not equal 3. And when we have this type of situation from algebra from before, we call this a contradiction. All right? And anytime I have a contradic contradiction equation, all right, it contradicts itself, meaning for no value of x or right, any value for the variable that I have here, I'm not going to get something that's true. It's always going to be a false statement. And so since that is the case, I know that I have no solution. And when I have something with no solution, we call that, especially since we're talking about a system of equations, a system with no solution is called inconsistent. And so this is what I get when I have an inconsistent system when I'm solving these using the substitution method. And the same thing is going to happen for an inconsistent system when I go to the next method that I'm going to uh, solve. All right, remember you can always use the empty set as your solution set um, when you have no solution. Let's look at another example. 3x plus 4y equals 12 and 2x plus 7y equals 14. Again, I'm going to solve this using the substitution method. Again, I'm going to abbreviate that with subs. That's the substitution method. And again, I'm going to go to one of my equations and solve it for one of the variables. Let's say I go here to my first equation and I solve for, let's say, let's solve for, for x. All right. If I solve that equation for x, I'm going to end up with, and I'll let you do that work on your own, but x equals 4 minus 4 thirds y. Okay. And so since I have this, I can substitute 4 minus 4 thirds y in for x into this equation here. And then I have an equation with uh, one variable. So I'll get the equation 2 times 4 minus 4 thirds y plus 7y equals 14. Of course, we can use our distributive property. We have 8 minus 8 thirds y, right? Distribute it to both of those plus that 7y still equals 14. Now, if you're not comfortable working with these fractions, even before you try to combine these two statements here, you can go ahead and clear those fractions by multiplying both sides by 3. And when you do so, you're going to get 24 minus 8y plus 21y equals 42. We can now combine those very easily, right? Negative 8 plus 21 is 13. So I get a 24 plus 13y equals 42. Subtract 21 from both sides, you'll get that 13y equals 18. And divide both sides by 13, we get that y equals 18 divided by 13. All right? And so this is my y-coordinate to my ordered pair, right? I saw for one variable. Remember, we, went, we need an x and a y-coordinate. So I don't want to stop here, but I'm going to realize that, hey, this is my y-coordinate to my ordered pair. That's my solution. Once I have my y-coordinate, I can either go to either one of my original equations, 
to plug this y value in in order for me to have an equation in one variable again and solve for x. Or I can go to this equation here where I've already solved for x, plug in my y since it's already solved for x. All I got to do is multiply the y by the four thirds there and I'll have my solution in terms of x. All right. I'm going to use that method there. Right. I'm going to go to this equation here x equals 4 minus 4 thirds times y. My y coordinate is 18 over 13. And I can simplify that. Of course, that equals 4 minus 24 over 13. And 4 minus 24 over 13 is 28 over 13. And so my solution here would be 28 over 13 for my x coordinate. And my y coordinate is 18 over 13. That means my uh, system is consistent and my equations in that system are independent. All right, there's one more method that we want to look at when it comes to solving systems of equations in two variables, uh, more specifically linear equations in two variables, and that is called the, the elimination method. All right. So what we're going to do with the elimination method is we're going to get opposite coefficients on one variable for each equation. What I mean by opposite coefficients, let's say I have a 2x, right? Of course, the coefficient on the x there is 2. And if I want an opposite coefficient, well, I need to take the opposite of 2, which is negative 2. And so this is the type of thing that I want to start seeing in my system. If I don't see them, I'm going to have to multiply, divide, use some kind of algebra technique so that I can see opposite coefficients on at least one variable in my two equations. All right. Once I do that, I'm going to add my equations together. Right. Because if you think about it, when I add opposite coefficients or expressions with opposites, I'm going to end up with zero. OK, now notice our equation always starts out. Our system primarily always start out with two uh, variables. Well, when I get opposites on at least one of the pair variables, right, and then I add them together, those variables are going to cancel because if I add them, their opposites, they're going to be zero. That's going to leave the other variable in that equation most times. And then when I do that, I'll have an equation with one variable and I can solve for that variable and then I can back substitute to find the other variable. Let's look at an Negative 5x plus 2y equals 15, and 4x plus 3y equals 11. Now, when we're doing these types of examples, you, you have the flexibility to choose whichever variable you want to get opposite coefficients in front of. Let's say that, hey, I want to get opposite coefficients in front of the y, right? Well, if I do that, then what I'm going to need is to think about the multiples of those numbers, those coefficients that I see there. For instance, the multiples of 2, right? And think about counting by 2, like 2, 4, 6. 8, 10, 12, 14, so on and so forth, right? Multiples of 3 are like 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, so on and so forth. And I want to look at the lowest common multiple, kind of like when we find the least common denominator. I want to find the least common multiple, right, which is the first number that uh, occurs on both of those lists. And in this example, is 6. That tells me that I need to get a... a Opposite coefficients of 6 and negative 6 in front of my y's here, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply my top equation to get my coefficient to be negative. So I'm going to multiply it by a negative 3. And, of course, these are equations, so you have to do it on both sides. And I'm going to come to my bottom equation, and I'm going to multiply it by a positive 2 for me to get a positive 6 in front of that y there as the coefficient. And when I do that, I'm going to end up with the following uh, system of equations. 15x minus 6y equals negative 45. And my second equation is going to be 8x plus 6y equals 22. Now that I have my opposite coefficients, I'm going to add these equations together. Right? 15x plus 8x is 23x. Notice here, these are 0. I don't need to write the 0, so we normally say that they cancel. And negative 45 plus 22 is a negative 23. Okay? Now I have an equation in one variable that's easy to solve, right? We, cannot solve, we can solve this by dividing both sides by 23, and we're going to get that x equals negative 1, right? So we know our x coordinate, and now we need to find our y coordinate. All I'm going to do is substitute this negative 1 in for x, and let's say I go to my first equation here, right? I'm going to get a negative 5 times negative 1 plus 2y equals 15. And if you solve that equation there for y, you're going to end up with y equals 5. 
And so my solution to this equation is going to be the ordered pair negative 1, 5, right? That means my system is independent. Well, my equations are independent. And my system is consistent because it has at least one solution. And there we go. All right. Let's look at it. 4x minus 2y equals 6 and negative 2x plus y equals 3. Negative 3, actually. Let's say I want to get opposite coefficients in front of my x this time. I have a 4 and a negative 2, right? Well, if I want to get opposite coefficients in front of the x, notice here if I count by 4s, 4, 8, 12. If I count by 2s, 2, 4, okay, 4 is my lowest, least common multiple here, right? Notice one of my equations already has a 4, so I'm only going to have to worry about multiplying the second equation by a 2 so that I can get a negative 4. And so I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by a 2, and my system is going to become 4x minus 2y equals 6 and negative 4x plus 2y equals negative 6. Add my equations together, and if you notice, these cancel and those cancel. Got to be careful here for you to remember what do they cancel to. Notice they cancel to 0. Don't put a 1 or a y. And I have a 6 and a negative 6. When I add those together, I'm also going to get 0. Here's that case where we get an identity. No double T there, just a T, single T. This is an identity, and when we have an identity equation, that means that we have infinitely many, many solutions. All right, when we have infinitely many solutions, we know that our system is consistent, but we know that our equations are dependent. Now, since we have a solution, we have to write our solution out. And since there's infinitely many solutions, it's very hard for us to write our, all of our solutions out. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give a general ordered pair in terms of x. All right, we're going to give our solution basically in terms of x. So that if I give you an x value or if you give me an x value, if I write my solution in terms of x, I should be able to plug that x value in and I should be able to know both the x coordinate and the y coordinate. That's the goal here. Now, of course, if I plug in the x, then our first coordinate is going to be that number I have. So I, here I have an x. But here I'm going to put ever what y equals, right? Because if I plug in something into an equation that's in the form y equals, I plug in the x there, then all I have to do is do that work and it'll give me what y equals. For instance, let's say I go to this equation here and solve it for y, okay? I have 4x minus 2y equals 6. I'm going to subtract 4x and then divide both sides by negative 2. I'm going to end up with the equation y equals 2x minus 3. All right. The same thing would happen if I were to solve this equation here for x, that original equation there. I get the exact same thing. And the reason I know that is because when we talked about the graph, remember we said we had infinitely many solutions. The graphs overlap, which means that um, they were the same line. They just look different. All right. And so if I give you an x here, you can plug it into that, right, that thing right there for x, right? And do the 2 times that number, subtract 3 from it, and you'll spit out the y. And so the thing that I'm going to put in my ordered pair for my solution here is whatever y equals. Well, here, since y equals 2x minus 3, the y coordinate of my general form of my solution for all x, when my solution is written in all in terms of x, is this solution right here. And this is what I'm going to write every single time. I'm going to write x. And this, I have to solve for y in terms of x, okay? That's what we do with every single dependent system when we're talking about a linear equation and two variables. All right, now that we know all these three methods here, let's use these methods to help us solve an application problem. It says Aviva has a total of 51 coins, all of which are either dimes or nickels. The total value of the coins is $4.15. Find a number of each type of coin, all right? So what's nice here is that, you know, normally when we're going through mathematics, at least when, from before with word problems, we have a, a, a function or something in terms of one variable here, right? 
Our variable represents something and the output represents something. We still have that situation going on here, but we have two unknowns here that we can write and we don't have to write one in terms of the other, which makes things a little bit more difficult. And so since we have our dimes our, and our nickels as our unknowns, I'm going to let X represent my number of nickels. And I'm going to let Y represent the number of dimes. And from that information, all right, those variables there, I should be able to set up two equations, all right? Because I'm going to need two equations in order to solve uh, a system of equations in two variables. If I need to solve for two variables, I'm going to need two equations. And what we're going to see in the future is that when we have three variables in an equation, we're going to need three equations, all right, in order to solve for all of those variables. But one of my equations is going to be coming from here, and my other equation is going to be coming from there, right? It says I have a total of 51 coins, right? We don't know how many dimes and nickels, but I know that I have a total of 51 dimes and nickels. And so if I add my representation for the dimes and nickels, x plus y, I should have an outcome of 51, okay? The total value of the coins is $4.15, right? $4.15. Right. I know that a nickel is worth five cents. Right. When I write that, it is a decimal. It's 0 0.05 times X plus 0 0.10 times Y equals four dollars and 15 cents. Notice this gives me the amount of money that's contributing to that four dollars and 15 cents from nickels. If I multiply the amount that a nickel costs by the number of nickels I have, that is how much money I have, you know, from my nickels. And I do the same thing if I multiply how much a dime is worth in dollars by the number of dimes I have. I have the contribution of my dimes to this total of $4.15 that I have. And if I add the contribution from the nickel and add the contributions from the dime, the dimes, I add them together, we know that it should equal $4.15. And so what we're going to do here is we have this system here. Notice we have a system with uh, fractions. If you're not going to be comfortable with working with fractions, what you can do is multiply both sides of your equation by the same number. And this, in this case, I'm going to do 100. My 100 is up here. And, and again, I chose 100 so that I can move my decimal two places to the right. All right, that's a quick way of thinking about multiplying by 100, by moving your decimals. So I have my first equation, x plus y equals 51. My second equation, 5x plus 10y equals 415. And now this looks like more of the you know, addition method or the elimination method, um, substitution or elimination method. Um, by the way, I didn't tell you this, but maybe in some of your previous math courses, you may have called the elimination method the addition method. And so when I just said the elimination or the addition method, um, I was basically talking about the same thing. All right, but right now we're going to solve this equation using either the uh, elimination method or the substitution method. Um, I'm going to choose to use, let's say, the, let's just use the elimination method. I want to eliminate the variable x. If I want to eliminate the variable x, I need a negative 5 in front of this 5 in my first equation. So that's what I'm going to multiply both sides by, negative 5. When I do that, my system of equations is going to look like the following. Negative 5x minus 5y equals negative 255. And 5x plus 10y equals 4, 15. I add those two equations together. I'm going to get 5y equals 160. Divide both sides by 5. I'm going to get y equals 32. And so remember, y equals the number of dimes, and so I know I have 32 dimes. I also want to know the number of nickels. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this equation here, x plus y equals 51, to find the number of nickels. Notice I'll plug in 32 for y, so I get x plus 32 equals 51. And if I subtract 32 from both sides, I'm going to get x equals 19. And so that means that we have 19 nickels. All right, this includes the video on system of linear equations and two variables.